Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Today, another update on the Transcendence a Keystone, a build based around physical damage mitigation uh, applied to the elemental mitigation and stuff like that. So I've been covering um, on how this Transcendence Keystone works in the past two videos. And my first take on it was a Pathfinder Viper Strike uh, going CI, like the typical version that you saw, and sorry for um, the fact that you could not open the POB. There is some issues with paste bin right now, um, so I cannot even generate the paste bin and send it over Discord, uh, and it will not open because there's like arrow whatever. So it's not my fault. Okay, the POB does work. It's just that paste bin does have a problem at the moment. But this was the final stage of um, the Pathfinder that I played in the past couple of days, pretty much, and yeah. So why do I think that the Pathfinder is not the solution to this problem uh, or to the uh, Transcendence Keystone? So first of all, the, um, there is three major issues that I have with this build. If I run out of flasks, I die. I have absolutely no DPS. And the third thing is I can barely sustain my um, energy shield sustain, right? So we are tanky AF. So I'm just saying um, this was the last version here. If I go to calculations uh, that you cannot see, but it's it's somewhere about 400,000 mitigation uh, among all sources, which is physical, um, lightning, fire, cold, and as well as chaos. Since chaos, I'm uh, CI, so I'm not even getting chaos damage. So I'm like 10 times more tanky than any of the tankiest characters that I've ever played in this entire game, right? And But the final nail in the coffin, more or less, was a carry that I've done for a friend. He was asking if I could carry his Cyrus uh, 7, Awakener 7. Uh, so I did that. And I was impressed in two ways, basically. One way was how insanely tanky this build is because I could face tank everything that Sara threw on me. I could just AFK into the Meteor, for example, like in the last phase. And um, the Meteor is doing about, I think, like 500 damage to me. I mean, I did only have like 2000 ES, right? But it's only a quarter of my life, basically, or ES in that case, um, that actually hit me, so I could face tank the uh, the entire thing. And the second thing that um, really impressed me was how fucking bad my damage was. Okay, so in the last version, I had like eight hundred thousand DPS for Viper Strike, and this actually means that I have to check my poison duration, which is like eleven seconds. Which means that um, I only get my eight hundred thousand damage if I'm like literally standing there hitting Cyrus. For straight 11 seconds which is not realistic at all because he's always like um base transitioning you know like uh like dashing around and being immune to damage for a certain times so my poison falls off and stuff like that it was just garbage af why is that because obviously we're only focusing on defenses i think the only damage sources that i had were like the large cluster jewel twice and a couple of points in like damage over time multiplier and that's about it my claw is actually pretty much high-end game with like 500 or close to 500 dps which is like i've never had such a good poison claw right and even that um didn't make the character to do enough damage so yes i was talking about um ways to upgrade the deep uh, the dps with like an house uprising with malevolence that i'm currently not running uh, and other sources like awaken gems and stuff like that but that realistically would cost me like 50x extra and i would probably like triple my dps but if you have shit dps and you triple your dps you're still gonna have bad dps right it's not going to turn your shit dps into god mode dps and li like i said like the thing that we scaled here was Stalwart Commander increasing our defenses, increasing our evasion rating, increasing our um, armor, and also discipline, which is the source of our energy shield, right? There is no damage whatsoever. The rest is like self-control, reduced mana reservation, reduced mana reservation over here, over there. So I could actually sustain my auras. And with that means that I'm more or less playing a Pathfinder as a kind of an aura stacker, because this is what I do, right? I'm scaling... Purity of elements, purity of fire, I, I would like to have malevolence on top of that. I have grace, I have determination, I have precision. So I'm like actually stacking auras, right? And the problem with that is, I mean, there is not a real problem with that, but I'm just scaling the defenses. And this is why I say like the Pathfinder, although it's it's insanely mechanical intensive with the self-poison and bleed immune and dead immune and 
ailment immune and reverse chill and all that kind of stuff, uh, which makes the build insanely cool, um, but not very effective. So the new approach in a transcendent keystone is something that I personally didn't want to go, but I think it's the um, only way to like really get the maximum out of transcendence, which is an aura stacker. So if we take a look at an Aura Stacker, like I leveled this character up yesterday, it's like currently level 83, we have a playtime of, yeah, playtime doesn't really matter at all because I was just like um, being in the hideout for most of the time, basically. Um, and this is like an, a typical Aura Stacker, right? The typical usual gear, Alpha's Howl, Sucker Walls, Nast, like whatever, you know, like Maligaros. I think there is enough videos about Aura Stackers out there, but my approach is a different to the usual aura stacker. So a normal aura stacker would go with the shafts with low life and stacking um, as much as um, aura effect as possible with like first demon equals or later on with the other passives. This is not a video based around how an aura, uh, aura stacker works. This video is meant to be what is the plan? How can we actually make the most tankiest character in this entire game? And we're gonna do this as well with the transcendence. I'm kind of getting so obsessed with Transcendence and I want to make a character that is just the insane, like the, the sickest character of all time basically based on uh, what we have um, here in this heist league basically, right? So if we would take a look at my current Aura stack, right? If we just put away or put the um, Pathfinder aside, let's like, I've made so many PUBs. I've like spending the last 20, 30 hours in the past like three or four days just with PUBing all kinds of variations. And I think, um, I think I'll just import my current character actually, which is like the super budget, like probably the most scuffed aura stacker that you will probably ever see because currently I'm having like, I think like 50 um, effect of aura and that's about it. So that, that's my current character, right? There is no voices. I have one single first demon equals. This is like the budgetest budget of budgets that you can budget more or less, right? But hey, I can't clear yellow tier map, so I, I will find a way to, to gather more currency because the next upgrades, well, let's talk about upgrades a little bit later, right? So why do I think is an aura stacker um, insane in terms of transcendence? So as you know, we are converting all of our, um, like basically you have like 90% maximum fire resistance or let's just write it down so it, it makes it a little bit uh, easier. So let's, let's assume we get a, a 10,000 fire damage hit, right? We would have 90% fire resistance, which is um, super easy reachable as an aura stacker with purity of fire with all the aura effect. So this is like not hard to reach, right? You need like, I'm not, not even sure, like two or 300% aura effect to make um, the 90% going, which is not even hard to get. And it's fairly budget. We're talking about an aura stacker, right? When you say budget, it's probably somewhere around the 100x mark, okay? Um, sky is the limit on this build, that means I could invest 10,000 exalts and I would probably still not be done with gearing this character, right? But uh, for the theory part, that means if I get a 10,000 fire damage hit reduced by 90% physical, uh, like uh, fire resistance, that would mean I would have 1,000 damage in my face, right? This is the leftover uh, fire damage, it's 1k, right? So we are effectively reducing um, damage incoming by 90% right? This is not really hard, you know, like this is the fact. So if we would take Transcendence and stack Armor and we do have another like, let's say 50k Armor, um, depending on how high the hit is, we would reduce the incoming damage by another 90% physical damage reduction, right? Because it's, um, it's still Armor, it's physical damage mitigation. But what Transcendence does is that your physical damage mitigation or your Armor basically is applied to the elemental. So that means I get a 10,000 fire damage hit, it gets reduced by 90% of my resistance, I get 1k. And then the armor is applied by Transcendence, which essentially um, reduces the nine, uh, the 1,000 damage into 100 fire damage, effectively um, reducing the incoming damage by 99%. And what that means is this version is like 10 times more tanky than an aura stacker with 90% physical, I uh, like uh, fire resistance. God, I'm, I'm so... Uh, with this physical damage mitigation. But yeah, that means that I can actually reduce the incoming damage by 99%. So there is two things that we have to solve about this, right? Chaos damage and actual physical damage since my transcendence will make that I will have no physical damage reduction applied from armor, right? 
So I was talking about that state in the past on the first videos where I said like you can go dodge, evade, block, um, or face acro, whatever, to try to not get hit at all, right? But this is not um, a good solution. It's like, um, I like to have um, my stats like, how, how you say, I'm probably missing the, the right word here, but it doesn't really matter. I just wanna don't like gamble if I die in one shot or not. So the two things that I say is worth it is either stacking enough physical damage mitigation to, so you have 90%, um, so with Transcendence, basically, you would have a 90% Fizz Reduction, 99% Elemental, and um, you would actually, if you go CI, you have 100% Damage Reduction um, for Chaos Damage, right? This is the stat that you would naturally do. So how do you get to 90% Physical Damage Mitigation? It is quite easy. Not easy, but it is reachable. If you take the Guardian Sub Ascendancy on the Scion with the Aura Stacker, you're going to get 1%. Um, physical damage reduction for you and your allies per aura, right? And with the increased aura effect, this will actually stack up. So the more aura effect you have, the easier it will be to get your physical damage mitigation up to a very, very high level. Um, and then you would naturally say, okay, I'm, I'm reducing incoming damage by 90%, elemental by 99%, and I'm CI, that means 100%. So what is even crazier about that is, what if I would actually apply the rule that I tried to or did on my Pathfinder, which means I'm converting 100% of the incoming physical damage um, to elemental damage, which would make me like immune to physical damage since I cannot get physical damage. Um, I would be immune to chaos and I would just um, naturally um, reduce the incoming damage by 99%, which would be an insane character. So to test this one, a friend of mine, Jix, um, has like an insane, like a really insane aura stacker in standard, you know, with like harvest gear and uh, like probably 10, 15, 20 mirrors invested into the character. But this is just like to try out what is possible and what not. So think about it. My bleed bow gladiator had like, was like super tanky, the champion version actually, the bleed bow champion, had like 25,000 effective life pool. My pathfinder it had about 300,000 effective life pool. That's why I could face tank the entire game just without having damage. If you would take um, the, the aura stacker that you would probably do if you have like shit tons of currency stacking all these aura effect nodes, um, we would be looking with transcendence to an actual, let's say, let's take the normal nebulous here. We would have about 4.8 million effective life pool, reducing all incoming damage by 99%, being CI immune to um, chaos damage, and also like the 90% mitigation that I was talking um, over here, right, with the normal um, guardian sub ascendancy. So if you would take the way that I would do it uh, with all the conversion that I plan to use. Um, I just didn't want to like uh, destroy the entire PUB, so I just added the, the stat 100% physical damage from hits taking as fire damage, so we convert all of that. We would actually be looking at 4.8 million against all sources of damage, right? And this means you are pretty much unkillable, right? So this actually solves the, the problem that I had on the Pathfinder. I don't need flasks to stay alive. I do have thousands of energy shield regen per second, which will sustain my energy shield. And due to aura effect stacking, um, I'm also stacking like the more aura effect I get, the more damage I will do, but also the more tanky I will get, right? So in that case, we're fixing all the problems from uh, the Pathfinder in terms of the aura stacker, just making it even more insane because my Pathfinder did never had a chance to cap out the resistance. So you might think um, if you take the route with the uh, transcendence and an aura stacker, you reduce your maximum resistance uh, by 5%, right? Which is true, but once you stack enough aura effect, your purities will give you enough maximum resistance. So even if you turn on transcendence, um, you will still maintain your 90% maximum resistance. So if you take a look, we, we said we have like 4.8 million effective HP against elemental or all incoming damage with transcendence. If we toggle it off, let's see the stats. Now we are talking about 480,000 means transcendent, as I said, will make you 10 times more tanky than like the craziest aura stacker out there with like 10,000 ES and like 90 oil resistance. This one makes it 10 times more tanky. It's not immortal build, don't get me wrong. This is not an immortal build, but reducing all the incoming damage by 99% while maintaining a high energy shield pool and having thousands of regen 
you will never die. Like, I, I don't know what you have to go up against to actually die with this build. So you maybe wonder, how will you get actually armor in this build? And the solution to that are the, um, what is it called? The uh, uh, um, alternate quality gems, right? So if we take a look, in the other build, I was using um, Grace and Determination. Determination will boost your, gives you more armor and the uh, Grace will give you flat evasion that we're gonna convert with the iron reflexes into armor. So this will be gonna be our base value because the gear that I'm currently having, I don't know how much armor do I actually have, like 1000, you know? Even if I put on um, Determination what I currently have, it will just double my armor pretty much or triple it with the aura effect. But I'm still, if you, if you don't have any base value, you cannot take that. So my first approach was actually trying um, to um, go like another sub ascendancy and actually going down here, taking iron reflexes and put another large cluster jewel over here and skip like the left side or the right side, anything like that. But it would cost like shit tons of skill points and you're gonna like make your character even worse. The solution to that is actually, I think it was the divergent um, determination um, that says, it's actually, yeah, it's divergent. You and nearby allies gains 10% of evasion rating as extra armor. Since we do run grace and we have like probably with the aura effect, like, I don't know, this guy has like, um, how much evasion is it? 27,000 based on our uh, effect. You're going to get a base value of like 2,700 that is then getting increased by uh, your skill tree and cluster jewels and stuff like that. But you will have about 60,000 armor without armor reflexes, which will easily get you up to 90% physical damage mitigation against uh, a lot of hits, right? You probably cannot tank like a 1 million incoming damage while this build with the conversion actually can do because we're talking about maximum hit pull. I need to get hit for 1.5 million damage in one hit to actually die on this character, right? So, basically means I don't have to go on reflexes, I'm going to use the Divergent um, Determination to grant me flat, um, flat armor, basically, that with that getting then um, increased by the effect of aura that I have and based on Determination and other sources. So, this way I can fix my armor problems, I can run Transcendence, um, and I can actually get up to like insane amounts of damage. Just the fact that I'm on an aura stacker and the more effective aura uh, that I get, um, the better it will be. So as I said, we um, the way I want to do it is basically um, swapping out some of the gear points, which will uh, decrease my DPS. But since I'm an aura stacker, I will have in like good enough DPS anyways. And what I would do um, to get the 100% conversion would be... Um, Probably a helm with 10% fist damage taking, um, let's say, 10% helm, which is um, any like Redeemer, Wallard modifier, is like 10% physical damage taking as far, cold, lightning, whatever. And craft this helm with an essence of uh, loathing, I think, that has the 5% reduced mana reservation. So I can cover this one up, right? Then for the chest, I will not go for a sack of walls. This is not a low life build. This is not going to be a shafts. What I'm going to do or try to do is getting a synthesized chest with the implicit of 10% damage taking as far damage and then craft it with an essence of, I think, a horror or delirium or something like that, which says 15%, right? It means I can get 25% conversion from the incoming physical damage on my body armor, right? So it makes it uh, 35 in the end. Um, with the Watcher's Eye that I still have from the uh, Pathfinder that I have over here, I'm having 34% conversion. And then um, there is like Shield Corruptions that can get me up to like 16% on the shield. Uh, and then in the end, we would have a Taste of Hate that would have another 20%. Um, and then I can increase the effect of the Taste of Hate with some uh, effect modifiers here. And I would get up to over 100% incoming physical damage as elemental damage, reducing the elemental damage by 99%, being immune to chaos with CI. So this build, basically, if you would just scrap it together, I think we would somewhere look at the three, 400 exalts, which I don't have, right? Um, but it's that's a good thing about an aura stacker. There is a never ending story. All you do is just get your character basics going to actually farm currency, farm contracts, farm, um, Delirium farm whatever you think is uh, worthwhile to get currency and then just upgrade piece by piece and making your character Insanely powerful in the long term 
So the cheapest way of doing that would be starting as a guardian, low life version with a prison guardian. So it's way easier to reserve all your auras. You should not have any problems. The better version of the aura stacker, I think, is the Scion with the uh, Necromancer sub ascendancy, giving you all the uh, attack and cast speed and still getting the physical damage mitigation of the Guardian based on the sub ascendancy, right? So I'm talking about I would not go Transcendence. This is like the last piece that you would actually add. So the first thing is that you're gonna um, stack up the normal armor so you're not using Transcendence, as I say again. You're just gonna use your Evasion Grace and get your base armor. And with the sub Ascendancy Guardian, you will be able to get 90% Fist Mitigation while maintaining 90% all resistance, basically, right? So you're gonna be super, super tanky at this point, right? Um, in the next stage, when this character runs, if it's like it's tanky, it deals damage, you can farm a currency. In the next stage, I would replace the shafts and stuff like that, going the CR route, which makes me immune to chaos damage, which is one of the biggest factors why aura stackers can die is chaos damage, right? Um, doing a CI aura stacker is way more expensive than the low life version, but hey, as I just said, it's about time, it's about currency, it's about investment, it's about reaching those step by step or reaching your goals basically, right? So then you would go CI while still maintaining your physical damage reduction and your alley resistance, right? And once you reach like a certain threshold, I think it was like 400% increased aura effect. I'm not entirely sure. This would be the point where you could uh, swap on transcendence. Um, while even having the minus five max resistance, you will maintain the 90% all resistance. And now your physical damage mitigation is non-existent and will apply to uh, elemental. So yet now you would be insanely vulnerable to physical um, damage, basically, right? But the good thing is, um, the Guardian Ascendancy will still um, reduce the incoming physical damage without armor, right? Because this is like endurance charges, it's a global thing. This the, the Guardian physical damage reduction is not based on your armor. The armor will just make it a lot easier to reach those stats, right? But once we swap on Transcendence, we don't have that. But in the end, we're still gonna get even if we have like, um, let's say 50% physical damage reduction, we are still gonna have like insane amounts of survivability. And we are talking about this character, even though it has less um, physical damage reduction, is still a lot more tanky than any normal aura stacker would be. And then it's about stacking those um, physical damage taking ass. Um, so you're gonna mitigate the physical damage even more and turning it into elemental damage where we already have 99% physical damage reduction until a point where you actually would swap out 100% of physical damage taking as element and then you can actually or potentially swap away from the guardian ascendancy because you don't need any physical damage reduction anymore since you're not taking any physical damage anymore um, and gets to either like pathfinder would be an option or even the inquisitor for even more damage so there is like insane amounts of um, things going on in this build and it's going to be super difficult, but I'm actually really, really up to, uh, for the grind. I think I can, with this template that I created myself, I think I can make the most tankiest character with still maintaining shit tons of DPS since it's an hour stacker um, in the entire game. And I personally don't think this exists already. Um, so this is the information that I that I worked up in the past like couple of days. And I think this is the way to go. And this is where I like fully gonna commit myself into this. Um, so basically I will also make a spreadsheet of the current investment that I have. Like I've done this for multiple builds in the past where I just have an, an Excel spreadsheet where I say like, hey, my Nebulous was 50 chaos um, and then just sum it up so you can actually check how much did I spend already? What were the most expensive parts in the gear? Um, and yeah, we're just gonna go along, uh, alongside this one. So at the moment, this character is like the most scuffed uh, character that you will probably ever see in terms of our stacker. There is no damage, there is no tankiness, but hey, at the moment I'm just um, doing trades and stuff to get the first, um, um, what is it called, voices with seven passives. So that's like, I think like 280 chaos or so. And then getting three of the first demon equals together with um, replenishing presence. And once I have that first cluster jewel set up, I think I should be able to do simulacrums or uh, do my 83 heists or grand heists because I will be insanely tanky already. Um, and that will sustain my currency for all the um, future upgrades as well as getting the second uh, voices going. And uh, yeah, that's about the current state of the transcendence, um, the transcendent ascendant our stacker basically right now. It's going to be an insane grind, but I'm totally up for it. And I think we're going to create something 
very, very intense, insane, and even bringing the aura stacker that is already insane um, to a whole new level of insanity, making it even 10 times more tanky um, in the long run, I think. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.